It's the most famous treasure story in world history, Montezuma's gold. Legend has it that the Aztec king had entire rooms filled with pure gold. All these riches attracted the attention of the Spanish conquistadors, who invaded the Aztec capital in 1521 and killed Montezuma, looking for a fortune in gold. But according to legend, before the attack, Montezuma sent thousands of his people north to their ancestral homeland with his empire's gold. I'm standing over the top of an ancient Aztec fortress, once filled with what is thought to have been billions of dollars worth of gold, treasure, and artifacts. I'm heading deep into this underworld to check it out. It just keeps going. Gold to the Aztecs was woven into the fabric of their culture and held a symbolic and spiritual meaning. In fact, the word for gold in the Aztec language literally means excrement of the gods, also known as holy shit. The precious metal also signified authority, leadership, power, and status. Many of these passageways collapsed over time. But archaeologists believe that these chambers surely led to the infamous rooms of gold in Montezuma's palace. We're talking about the arrival of these conquistadors for the purpose of destroying all of this precious empire that he's in charge of. He has to outsmart them. And he does just that. When Cortez enters this palace, the treasure is long gone. Legend has it, it disappeared with 10,000 Aztecs heading back to their homeland. Long distance trade routes suggest they could have made it all the way to the American Southwest with enough gold to start a new colony. But they disappeared. Some believe they hid the gold in Arizona's Superstition Mountains. As the story goes, in the late 1800s, a Dutchman named Jacob Voltz made regular trips deep into the superstitions, coming back with colossal amounts of gold. So much gold, way more than people thought should be coming out of these mountains. So rumors spread that he had uncovered the Aztec treasure in a hidden cave. It was named the Lost Dutchman, but Jacob never told anyone where he was getting all that gold from. It was a secret he took to the grave. I'm going to meet a guy named Josh Feldman. He's a rancher and a known treasure hunter out here in the Superstition Mountains. So I'm wondering, is there really some connection between the Lost Dutchman and the Aztec gold? Man, here's the lay of the land. This is beautiful. You want to see gold from the Superstition Mountains? Yes, I do. Follow me. I came here thinking that the gold that Jacob Waltz was finding had been brought here from another land by Aztecs who were coming from, from Montezuma's order, bringing the gold from Mexico to this land. I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Now, that's not to say that the Aztec didn't come north yeah. after Cortez defeated them. But we know for a fact that Jacob Waltz's mine was not Aztec in gold. Although Josh doesn't believe there's Aztec gold here, he wants to show me why so many people believe there is and why these legends have persisted in this area for decades. This little pile right here, yep. look through this material. Shine your light right there, Don. Oh, I see. That's the gold right in there. What you're looking at that you think is gold is gold. That's crazy. They run all the way through here, too. Let me put some water on it for you, and that's going to really shine back. Oh, yeah, I can see it right there. There, in this little piece here alone, there's probably pushing a quarter ounce. Oh, wow, so you don't mind if I take this, right? I do mind. I mind a lot. So Jacob Waltz comes to this area, comes to the superstitions, and he finds uh, plenty of gold, but he's mining it himself. He was mining gold just like this. So this sort of this totally refutes the notion that the Dutchman mine was a cache of Aztec gold brought from Mexico. This ground right here provided the gold that the Dutchman found, and it still does today. Hmm. So Aztec gold isn't here, but maybe Josh, one of the most respected gold hunters in America can point me in the right direction. So the Aztecs did migrate north. Am I generally right about coming through this zone of the world? They could have come through New Mexico. Yeah. They could have come through Arizona. Absolutely. 
and I believe that it is very possible they took gold with them mm -hmm. after Cortez attacked. But you have to follow the people themselves. Who are their descendants? Native tribes here in the Southwest speak the same language as the Aztec did, Uto Aztecan. Uto Aztecan, really? The Ute Indians speak Uto Aztecan to this day. They must have been related. <laughs> Josh tells me that Uto Aztecan is a hybrid language that combines the native Ute language with the Aztec dialect. It's unknown when or how exactly it was created, but it seems like it could be proof that Utah's local Native American tribe interacted with the Aztec at some point. So when I hear the word Ute, I mean, I'm thinking Utah, the land of the Ute Native American tribe. Absolutely. Hence the name. That's right. Utah is definitely their stomping grounds. So somewhere in Utah is the truth about the Aztec. Cheers. All right. This could be clear evidence that the Aztecs did make their way as far north as Utah. The ancient codex says their ancestral homeland was on an island, on a lake, full of white birds. So I'm headed to the biggest island in Utah, Antelope Island, in the middle of the Great Salt Lake. Look at that white bird there. There's a whole flock of them coming in there. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm meeting with state archaeologist Elizabeth Hora to see if this island could have been the Aztecs' fabled homeland called Atzlan. Elizabeth, is that you? Hi, welcome to Mushroom Springs. I feel like I'm, I'm visiting the archeologist zoo here. <laughs> right? Is, what is this place? This is a prehistoric camp. So what have you found here? What we found were a lot of faunal bones, so a lot of animals. Oh, okay. And a lot of evidence of people cooking and eating those animals here. Right. What time frame are we talking about? In this area right here, probably about 600 to about 1300 AD. Okay. So there was a society living on this island almost a thousand years ago. Archaeologists call them the Fremont. Very little is known about the Fremont people beyond what archaeologists have learned from the artifacts in this region. Those artifacts suggest the Fremonts lived here in Utah until they disappeared from the area in 1300 AD. And this is a hundred years before the Aztec Empire popped up 2,000 miles south in what is now Mexico City. So could the Aztecs and the Fremont be the same people? The climate was changing so rapidly in ways it hadn't before, and so people adapted to a changing environment and to their population pressures. And famously, a lot of folks who were living even as far north as Utah here went down and became all of those people in the Pueblo world mm -hmm. below, and even points further south into Mexico. Sure. I mean, we could be talking about the Aztecs here, right? Potentially. The beginnings sure. of the Aztecs here in Utah. Absolutely. There's no reason to believe that people would have stopped at any borders that we have here, and there's no reason to believe that people wouldn't have continued to hop to points south. Exactly. To what is today Mexico, quite possibly. Quite possibly. That's amazing. Based on the artifacts that Elizabeth discovered here, this island on a lake full of white birds, could have been the ancestral homeland of the Aztecs. This civilization could have then traveled south to form the massive Aztec empire. But when the Spanish conquistadors attacked them hundreds of years later, where would they have gone with piles of gold on their backs? Maybe right back to their homeland. And maybe that's this very island. The stories and legends of the Aztecs have fascinated archeologists and historians for hundreds of years not just because they were the most powerful empire in the Americas, but also because no one knows exactly what happened to them after their empire fell. Many believe thousands of Aztecs took their treasure and embarked on a journey north back to their mysterious homeland of Atzlan, the island of white birds. Wow, look at that. <laughs> Although Montezuma's mythical treasure is yet to be found, it's quite possible that their fabled homeland truly existed. And this island, the very soil I'm standing on, could be Atzlan, the birthplace of the Aztecs.
I mean, we didn't find Aztec gold, but maybe in the end, this is the gold I was looking for.